It's been over a month since Gamergate began, and with social justice warrior stupidity in the spotlight once more, well, our cup runneth over. To fully capture the scope of the stupid, we're going to need your help again for a very special edition of Shit Feminists Say. If you have Gamergate-related feminist stupidity that you'd like us to read on the air, kindly drop it into the comments section of this video. Join us tonight as we discuss Shit Feminists Say, Gamergate Edition, along with Anita Sarkeesian, Scourge of the Girl Gamer, Part 2. As always, the show will be available for download after the broadcast at HoneyBadgerBrigade.com. to the jugular. This is Honey Badger Radio. Radio with bite. Hello and welcome to Honey Badger Radio. Tonight's topic is Shit Feminists Say, Gamergate Edition. Tonight with me are several lovely ladies and uh, some wonderful guests. We've got Karen Strong. Hey Karen, you there? I'm here. I'm here. Hanging in there. We've got uh, Crystal Garcia, who is kind of here but not here. We've also got Hannah Wallen. Hello. How are you? We've got uh, Kat Rocha. Hey, everybody. And we've got Rory. Hello. <laughs> Hannah, would you uh, like to read the news, or are we going to uh, go into... Um, do you want to go into Gamergate first, Rory, or anything like that? Or? It's up to you. Well, let's do news first. Uh, do you have the news, Hannah? <laughs> Where is the news? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the post on, on the on the blog. <laughs> okay, no, I don't have that open yet. It's also in the. Okay, we're a well, little we're... disorganized tonight. Yes, 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 we are. Uh, okay, we got the well, Adam boys a little disorganized, but that's different. Oh yeah. Uh, well, we could it's, it's discuss totally... it any anything new about uh, Gamergate, Rory? You, you want to talk to us about? <laughs> Besides. Uh... You know, people starting to get death threats, syringes with mystery liquids, uh, doxing, and the like. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, the, there's way too much to go over in a small amount of time. <laughs> I mean, it's, um, it's true. And, um, I mean, while we're waiting for the news to get pulled up, we could, you know, talk a bit about that. Or, or just a little bit, and we'll get back to it later. When we go well, into the full show topic, go on. Just, uh, Milo is currently working on a new set of articles, as far as I was reading on Twitter, about um, the connection with uh, uh, Digra and uh, uh, all the events that are going on with that, since uh, there was a lead on it a while ago, uh, which specifically started off with... Uh, you know, a chain of events where the people of Digra are talking about games and, uh, you know, could the you clarify what um, Could you clarify what uh, Digra is for people at home who don't know what that is? Oh, it's, uh, uh, I, I don't know that, I don't remember the acronym off the top of my head, but basically what it is is a, uh, a group of individuals who are basically sitting there trying to dictate how games go. Like, uh, what are the changes that need to happen and such? Basically, a special interest group for video games. Oh, isn't that isn't that nice? They have one for everything. Yeah, I am, <laughs> I'm so glad that he's finally going to be tackling it. For, yeah. No. Absolutely, and I've heard a little bit coming from from that. I remember watching a Sargon of Akkad's video, talking about a lot of how these women will meet up and talk about how they can try and influence games and things like that. Sounds it's yeah, it's it's it has to be seen to be believed. It's sort of like what? Well, You're actually both, saying this stuff? It's both men and women and uh yeah, it's uh it, it's it's pretty freaking psychotic. Uh I, I tell you to go watch that video that you mentioned. If uh, anyone who is listening is interested, just because 
even if you're not into video games, it's just creepy to hear some of the stuff that they say and they want to dictate how games go, such as removing peer reviews and swaying how uh, things go inside of a, you know, a multi-billion dollar industry. <laughs> well, not only that, but I mean, they flat out stated that they have this weird idea that um, video games are promoting evil masculinity and that they want to... Um, teach and basically program people through video games to that, not be that, so masculine. Isn't that what like ISIS does? Only like for different reasons. They they lure uh, lure recruits from other countries, from democratic countries, to come and fight for them by using video games and videos and all kinds of other stuff. Isn't that what the accusation is? Supposedly, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah, that's that's exactly what I want. I want indoctrination through video games for my children. It's just what I want them to be doing after school is Brainwash getting themselves one. good and indoctrinated, right? Um, one of the things that that strikes me as hilarious too, because you know the conspiracy theorists out there, uh, the Alex Jones types, um, and. For all I know, for all I know, everything Alex Jones says is the truth, but you just can't take him seriously because of his delivery, because, you know, he's just over the top, right? So even if there's some things that he says that are actually factual and accurate, right? These conspiracy theories that he talks about, right? It, he's like that conspiracy theorists on the internet have thrown the conspiracy theory into a state of utter disrepute. So all these people who are joining together and having private meetings to discuss how they're going to guide the video game industry and dictate how it works and teach messages to the youth through video games and all of this stuff, right? When you say like they're, actually having private meetings and and talking about how to sort of take over and dictate to the industry so that they can indoctrinate youth you get called a conspiracy theorist and everybody thinks about oh my god they're just out like alex jones right even when there are conspiracies going on oh you're just a conspiracy theorist oh put your t take your tinfoil hat off right all of that is just such a convenient way these days to dismiss anything that anybody says about this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing about it is, is this really isn't uh, a conspiracy if you really think about it. This is, well, it is a conspiracy, but not in the way that most people think about conspiracy theories. Like you were saying, uh, most people think of just this out like really outlandish claims, but this, all of this stuff, all the stuff that's involved in Gamergate, uh, for the most part, a lot of it really is just basic shitty business practices, you know, really shifty stuff. So it, it's not something out of the ordinary. It's just regular good old fashioned corruption. Yeah. But yeah. And I guess we'll go to the news before we go into it, but I mean, uh, final thoughts before we, because we'll get back to this later on once we've gotten all the news and stuff out of the way, the business. Well, you know, technically the, the dictionary definition, since we all love dictionary definitions so much, thanks to Gamergate and feminism and all that, is the, the dictionary of definition or dictionary definition of conspiracy includes the action of plotting or conspiring. So obviously we were, we were uh, a conspiracy right before the show we we conspired to get a radio show started for the night um not not necessarily very well conspiring but still <laughs> we're, we're a conspiracy we're guilty yeah um we're and, and therefore we're we don't exist because if you believe in us you're a conspiratard <laughs> and, and 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 just for the record i know that video games absolutely totally pac-man made me hunt down those those little cookies that have the, you know, sugar wafers have the little goo in between because they're wafers. And I played that game so much that I just have to eat wafers now and, and, and cherries. Oh, you just <laughs> so much. Um, one of the things is you don't, when a video game or a piece of media reflects uh, society as it is and maybe exposes part of society, 
um, to, to sort of the, the parts of society or the parts of social interactions that you don't necessarily um, see, right, or notice, right? They sort of fly under the radar. When, when a piece of media does that, that that does not indoctrinate that's that's not it's just showing you the world you know how how it is right but there is such a thing as uh as video games or or media that can affect people i mean absolutely that can affect how how they are and uh how they behave and this is what they want this is really what they want they believe not only that video games can train people to be misogynistic i don't think that that's something that you can train a person to do without heavy heavy duty amounts of abuse often early in childhood but they think that these video games train people to be misogynistic and so they want to make video games that will train people to be something different so they actually are the ones rather than just sort of passively reflecting the social values and the social mores in society as they are and what people believe everybody believes that hurting women is wrong everybody believes that the bad guy can be identified by his willingness to hurt women for convenience or just because he gets his kicks out of it right everybody everybody already feels that right they want to use video games as a tool of propaganda they are the ones who are wanting to actually send out a targeted message an intentional targeted message through video games right and that is just creepy you're right you're right it is creepy but they they also think adam baldwin is a whole group of people a a secret group of people that that started a hashtag to control everybody's attitude towards the gaming media are you serious yeah. I uh, yeah, there was there was actually there's an image that went around. I don't know if I can find it again, but there was an image that, that that went around related to that. They think he's they think Adam Baldwin is a team yeah. of people, but they think yeah. thousands of people who are part of not your shield are like one Sock or two people. Yep, like, yep, all the What? Yeah. Nobody ever said they made sense. Yeah, no, I mean, no. Th- that's what the show, this whole show is about, is how oh, it don't oh, make oh. sense. <laughs> Actually, um, I would definitely advise anybody who really wants to see, look at the stupid head on, go to Rebecca Watson's, like, Twitter feed and see what she's been saying about Gamergate. Oh, no, no, you yes, can't but, make oh, it. Is, on is, your she, hands is she first trying to uh, get people to pay out. attention to her again? No, yeah. no, yeah, just uh, don't, don't, don't she's respond. It's, it's of- just... She's it's clinging so to relevance by the atoms on the tips of her fingernails. That's exactly. She's, so, she's pulling a, uh, a Jessica Valenti. Remember when um, when there was Women Against Feminism and then she and a bunch of other like notable feminists had it in their minds that they were all just sock puppet accounts that really it's it's MRAs in disguise. Ma- white cis male MRAs are behind the Women Against Feminism pulling the strings. <laughs> Great yes, well, don't you know everybody who sports. argues with social justice warriors? We're all sock puppets. All right, let's get to the news, you guys. If we, if we go <laughs> okay. too far off on a tangent, we'll never get to it. And they call us conspiracy theorists. We'll I prefer to call myself a Muppet. Forever. Sock, one, one person with a lot all of... those. <laughs> no, well, so no, I... He's cisgendered. We just know it. I really we... am a sock puppet. I don't exist. I'm just yeah. a figment of all your all's imagination, and if you stop thinking about me, I'll disappear. Well, not before you read the news, though. Okay. Okay. Whalen University predicted to experience a 500% spike in... I hope I pronounced that. No, there's an S. Wesleyan University predicted to... Dyslexia strikes again. Uh, predicted to experience a 500% spike in sexual assault complaints. As a part of the feminist campaign to increase sexual assault claims on college campuses so that they can receive more funding to address the, quote, problem, end quote, of sexual assault on college campuses, Wesleyan University has just announced that all three of its on-campus fraternities must admit women by the year 2017. 
Its single sorority, being a sorority and not a fraternity, is apparently exempt from the ultimatum. One of the reasons cited for the new policy by Nicole Brenner, vice president of the Wesleyan Student Assembly and key backer of res the resolution, is to have a, a response to sexual assault in addition to equality and inclusion on campus. The latter goal will be achieved, apparently, by forcing open male-only spaces to female uh, females while keeping female-only spaces cock-free. The National Institute of Justice reported that one in ten sexual assaults on campus happen in fraternity houses because of the culture of heavy partying and drinking that is typically associated with them. Brenner and other students say that going co-ed and getting more females into, into fraternity houses boozed up and ready to claim assault after next day buyer's remorse sets in is a perfect way to increase alleged sexual assaults, so feminist activism will be seen as more necessary than ever before. But this is still not enough. I think that focusing on such a small, specific population here really doesn't address the issue as a whole, said Brenner. She is right, as fraternity members are only a fraction of college students. The Wesleyan C Student Council is currently consider considering additional plans to increase frivolous sexual assault claims among the wider student body. A desirable side effect of the plan is that more male students will be expelled from university on shaky sexual assault allegations and screwed out of college educations, thus further cementing the rapidly growing female hegemony on higher education. Mark Moores, an executive vice president of a company that insures fraternities, says he doesn't think that fraternities going co-ed will increase safety on campuses, but rather might do the opposite. I think when you have a co-ed situation in a fraternity facility or house and you're cohabitating, there's an increased likelihood with engagement with members of the opposite sex, said Moores. Moores, bless his male heart, apparently doesn't understand that safety on campus is not really the goal of the backers of this resolution. His cold calculative, calculating abusive male logic also makes it clear he was not educated at Wesleyan University. So, any comments? Um, to quote that Mystery Science Theater, I dare you to make less sense. That was a beautiful oh piece my of God. satire, actually. Yeah, that was, yeah, that, that was, wrote that, done was done awesome. A, that was done by Mike, um, a, a wonderful volunteer. I don't know if he wants his last name given, so I... I, I well, he's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's... He he's is pretty. awesome, but it's like, I know that every single solitary thing that he's that was in that is absolutely true. <laughs> It was just so beautifully put together. Well, you see, you see it with everything, right? Like we saw it with the posters, the "Don't Be That Guy" posters, right? When we had our big, uh, big controversy over the "Don't Be That Girl" posters, there was a lot of newspaper articles, and they stated that the posters, the original "Don't Be That Guy" posters, were working because in Vancouver they had a reduction in reported sexual assaults. And in Edmonton, they had an increase in reporting. Right? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. but how how do you know that, because you're just tracking reporting rates and one went down and the other went up. Right? So how do you know that the posters were successful or had anything to do with that? Because, you know, basically you're saying that you just know that in Vancouver, the number of rape reports went down because the number of rapes went down. You just know it because you know you just feel it, right? And in Edmonton, the number of reports went up because re women felt better about reporting, and therefore the, the the number of sexual assaults was the same or less, but more women reported, right? And it's the exact same logic uh, or exact same application of completely wonky standards that leads people to say, uh, these feminists to say, that colleges with high rates... Uh, report of high a high number of reported rapes under the Clary Act are rampant hotbeds of like brutal sexual assault, right? And the colleges that don't have any or have only a few, they are you know the colleges with a chilling atmosphere where women fear to report their sexual assaults. They it's not that they that they don't have any sexual assaults. It's that that women fear to report them and and therefore they're extra misogynistic so there must be even more rape going on right 
because of the chilling atmosphere of the campus, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, what? How how do you even communicate with these people, and how do you even interpret what they're trying to do at Wesleyan without basically coming out with a conclusion like in Mike's article? I mean, it sounds like satire. Yeah. yeah. But what's really I happening is is basically they're trying to solve rape by basically eliminating uh, fraternity culture. Because um, one of the things that I don't, I don't know if it was addressed is that only one of the three fraternities on campus accepts co-ed. So basically we're talking about, you know, national organizations, national fraternities, and two of them are male only. They don't accept co-ed and only one does meaning that it will reduce it down to being like one sorority and one fraternity. <laughs> so it's it's really ridiculous. Okay, so it's, there's some stuff I I don't actually understand or know about fraternities and sororities. The the, the college that I went to, um, I went to a college that was run by the Mennonite church uh, for, for a long time. I think it was still run by the Mennonite church when I went to school there. Uh, and it was su such a conservative campus. It was a dry campus, and it was a no-smoking campus. Um, it had closed dorms that, that had closed hours in the dorms, so the women couldn't go in the men's dorms after hours and vice versa. And if you got caught, you were in big trouble. Um, so there, there was it was a very, very conservative campus, and they did not allow fraternities and sororities because of the party atmosphere. But it was always my understanding that sororities were female only and fraternities were male only and fraternities generally had an associated sorority not a co-ed fraternity but two separate houses with two separate sets of of letters that that defined them and and the fraternity was just a fraternity with only guys and the sorority was just a sorority with only girls but they would be associated yeah, uh, traditionally is that, is speaking, that correct? yeah, traditionally speaking, yes. But what's been happening is that, of course, like women have been feeling as though fraternities are just this boys club, this impenetrable boys club that they should be allowed to join. However, just like sororities, the, just like the uh, boy sorority, scouts, you yeah. know, girls can join the boy scouts. Yeah, sororities. Yeah, I have a friend that was however, a boy scout. the thing about sororities, though, now is that they aren't demanding that uh, that men be let into sororities. So it's. <laughs> It's like you gotta let us into the girls into the boys club, but uh, but like if you if you if you penetrate sororities, that's entering female spaces. But we do need to get back. No get pun on intended. To topic. Oh, I don't know about that. Sorority sisters get penetrated often enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dad, I just my brother went to a school that had frat houses and sororities, and they they actually did not have enough room in the dormitories when he started there his freshman year and so they housed him in a frat house um for i guess part of the first quarter and by the time it came time for him to decide whether to rush the house because uh, he was invited to because he stayed there temporarily um and and probably also because he had a band but uh he was he was chomping at the bit to get out because he could not keep track of his studies um i i cannot imagine you know any any benefit to joining that environment for for girls um it, it does not seem to me like it would be anything but a distraction from their studies you're, you're assuming that the idea is that they are quote unquote being left out of the fun and they are now being brought into the fun when the reality is is you know we all know it's no these people are having fun without us and we have to destroy that we, you know nobody can have fun without feminism yeah, nobody can have fun with feminism either. Exactly. I, this isn't yeah. about equality. This isn't about any of that. This is about, well, they have their little club and, and damn it, you know, we should be able to be a part of that. No, they can't be part of our club because that's our club. But but they have their club and I just can't stand that. I need to be a part of it, God damn it. Yeah, yeah. Or destroy it completely and nobody can have any. Yeah, Exactly. All right, to the next story. Now the next Please, story. If you wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind, Hannah. Thank you. Oh no, I do not mind. 
I managed to scroll back up, though. Here we go. Having a best friend can be dangerous for a teen girl. An article in Psychology Today discusses why teenage girls and their friends have such toxic relationships. A new study in the Journal of Developmental Psych psychology says that a great deal of the mental health of teenage girls can be attributed to what teen girls choose to talk about. It was found that teen girls are more likely to be depressed than teen boys due to the way they form relationships, relationships which are formed around common negative feelings over their problems. Instead of handling their problems, they engage in consistent behaviors of bouncing negative feelings off one another, which puts them at higher risk for depression. It was They didn't hang out with the girls I hung out with. Um, it was found that girls who engaged in this behavior more intensely were more likely to develop long-lasting symptoms of depression. And I got something to say about this. Um, my, my my teenage years were kind of toxic for a completely different reason. I was on steroids and antihistamines and, and uh, decongestants and pretty much everything else medical science could throw at me uh, after a doctor predicted I wasn't going to survive to be 21 if they didn't do something. And um, being under the influence of a, a bizarre cocktail of drugs, one of which uh, did result in a class action lawsuit for what it did to people, including what it did to people's minds. Um, I probably was the toxic friend with the negativity, but I hung out with some very stellar young ladies when I was growing up and, and, uh, I would say the big sister effect kicked in and the negativity was just simply not allowed. Um, and I don't know whether I can agree with this article, uh, basically because, I don't think that it's I think they're they're reversing the uh, the direction that this occurs. I think that what actually happens is uh teen girls that already have toxic attitudes bounce them off of each other. Not so much that that they uh develop toxic attitudes and develop toxic mental health because of what they choose to talk about, but be, but that they choose to talk about negative things and choose to uh, bully each other and choose to whine at each other because they already have those bad attitudes. And it actually takes guidance, um, something that's kind of being eliminated from the arena of the teenage years by popular demand, I suppose, but it takes guidance to, uh, to prevent that. What, what uh, I, that's my two cents. Yeah, is that, oh. that most most girls when I was in high school um, were very concerned with popularity and very concerned with being attractive and very concerned with a whole host of things that I really didn't interest me. I'd had a taste of a two week taste of popularity in elementary school, and I didn't like it because it always felt like there was the sword of Damocles hanging above me waiting to fall, right? Um, it just wasn't worth the anxiety. And I think that, uh, I think that some certain girls uh, who only want to engage in a pity party, right, they attract each other. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of feminist stuff is mirrored in that behavior like a lot of feminists don't ever get over that stage where all they want to do is talk about their problems and talk about how bad they feel about their bodies and talk about how bad they how 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 oppressive western beauty standards are and how horrible it is that they have to carry a purse because you know clothing manufacturers just just don't make pockets in their clothes even though they wouldn't buy them if they did because pockets full of stuff make your thighs look lump lumpy right like they just they anything to complain about anything to complain about that brings the entire group down and makes <laughs> the entire group feel like that's the tumbler entire in a nutshell world right there. is that a is tumbler. pile of shit that you it's know, also feminism in a nutshell exactly that's a sphere you know and i mean it's one thing to complain about actual problems and actual problems that have concrete solutions right like if you want deep pockets in your pants stop worrying about lumpy thighs 
because as long as you're worried about lumpy thighs, clothing manufacturers are not going to give you those pockets. They're just not, right? Because they cost money to put the pockets in, right? Well, or so stop funny. wearing those really low-waisted jeans, the hip hugger jeans. There's not room for pockets if you lower the waist from the waistline to the top of your underwear. Yeah. Now, now well, see, here, here's the thing. We here are trying to find solutions. We don't want to be miserable. We want to be happy. We want to put shit in our pockets. But they, unfortunately, there is a certain class of female that just likes being miserable and likes screaming, I'm the victim. I'm the victim because I can't put shit in my pockets. Well, then buy pants that will let you do that. No, that's an actual solution. I'd rather sit here and bitch about it. And I want all of my friends to join me in the bitching because if all of my friends join me, then I am vindicated i have i have validated my complaint that i am a victim that i can't put shit in my pockets and that's the entire feminist yeah. culture at least the modern day yep. feminist i mean look at look i'm sure you're gonna bring this up anyway but look at um emma watson's speech i mean she actually you know she she Brings up, you know, that, that men have real problems. But then what does she do? She says, well, you guys wouldn't have these problems if you would help women out. See, if you help women out, then you won't have these problems. So it all comes back to, you know, it's all on you. You got to help us because we're just helpless victims. And it just, she brought back that yeah. freaking, you know, rhetoric of, you know, we're victims and you guys have to do something because, you know, we're victims and it's just too damn hard to fix things well you yeah. know and, and it's it's not i don't i don't think it's necessarily innate to girls i think it, i think it might be innate to girls to have a tendency in that direction to complain complain until uh someone will fix things like if they're if they're on their own and there's no one who will fix it women tend to be uh fairly capable if they've if they've learned this early on to to step in and fix it themselves not the women right. i know but if if they have been introduced to that form of independence and not not having somebody swoop in and fix their problems, I mean, like I was a friend of mine was she used to babysit and she had a 10 month old kid and she was babysitting a nine month old kid and she had uh, also a toddler. Uh, her 10 month old is a boy. The the per, the kid that she was babysitting was nine months old was a little girl and she had this little tiny puppy and this puppy used to like to nibble the baby's toes the babies would be sitting on the carpet playing and the puppy would come up and start nibbling on the baby's toes and her son would just reach out and grab this puppy and like chuck it across the room okay you know you're not fucking nibbling my toes you're not biting my toes right? This little girl would just sit there and scream. She would sit there and literally let the puppy chew her toes and scream. She wouldn't even wiggle her feet. She would just scream until somebody came and removed the puppy. Right? Did and she look around like, to wow. see if people were paying yes. attention? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. oh, wow. <laughs> we used to have one that oh, did gosh. that, a neighbor that did that. She would sit there and scream. She would like scream for half an hour over nothing. And yeah. she would stop in the middle yeah. and look around. Yeah, and if anybody while. was looking her way, she'd yeah. start again. Yeah. And yeah. I think I think this might be an instinctive behavior on the part of girls that needs to be trained out. Boys, whether it's in it, it is an instinctive fussing, boys are actually from birth, they're more fussy than girls, and they tend to cry more than girls. But that gets socialized out of them, right? They learn fairly early on that that's not going to get them positive attention. Right. That's not going to get them help and compassion and, and, and snuggles and whatever. Learn how to deal with your problems. Learn how to falling off a bike thing. Yeah. Learn how to pick the stupid puppy up and chuck it across the room. Right. You know, take care of yourself. You can do it. And girls don't tend to get that education. And so I think if, if the bitching circles, 
Yeah, and they they do. They form the bitching circles, and they they don't want um, so many women that I know that like because I have a lot of people come to me at work to talk about their problems because they know that I'm not going to talk to anybody else about them, right? I'm I'm not going to spread gossip. I don't do that, and. I- they talk about their problems. They don't want solutions. And they definitely don't want honesty, right? They definitely don't want to hear, actually, everybody's pretty much okay and in the right, and, you know, your problem is actually you, right? They don't want to hear that. They they don't want to hear anything that could possibly lead to a solution. So no, they just want to cur- commiserate and... And they want they want validation for their feelings, and they want the attention, and they thrive on the attention. They do. I I I swear they get like some sort of adrenaline rush out of it or something. I mean, you know, besides, uh, you know, it helps their self esteem to know that they're validated. That yes, I am helpless. I I I when I also I talk to people on the phone a lot. I help a lot of people, and I will occasionally get people who they're not calling me because they want actual solutions or they want to fix the problem that they're in. They want somebody to commiserate with, or they actually want somebody to tell them, yes, you are totally and completely screwed. And when I tell them, "Hmm?" you're terminally unique. Yes. And well, but here's the thing, right? If you're allowed, if you can get validation, right. For being completely useless. If you can, if you can be made to feel like a valuable person, and completely useless at the same time, then that means that you're worth more than everybody else. Well, it also absolves you from responsibility. It means you're not responsible for fixing your own problems. You're not responsible for getting yourself out of this situation. You're, you know, it's somebody else's responsibility. And I think a pe- I think there are certain people who really like that freedom. To and I mean, and going back to a. Uh, uh, feminists they really want that freedom of saying yes it's big daddy patriarchy's fault that you know i'm you know i'm not more successful in my career no it's not that uh you know you didn't study in school and you barely eked through and you know you keep taking all these days off of work and you keep being caught on facebook and twitter and yeah you keep hitting on guys at the office no it's not that it's that big daddy patriarchy doesn't want you to get a raise Mm. That's a good point. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next topic, a rape epidemic by women. This week, major news sources picked up a story that we at Honey Badger Radio have been discussing for almost a year. And looking at the most recent U.S. CDC study on intimate partner violence and doing actual journalism, lo and behold, the media discovered that sexual assault is a two-way street and that women rape just as often as men do. Well, no shit. We at Honey Badger Radio would like to thank you for reporting a story this important at a snail's pace. We honestly don't know what we'd do without you. Yep. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I, yeah, this is something that, that actually... That, honestly. It's like, finally! You're like, finally they acknowledge it. You're like, oh, yeah. shit. Oh, well, one, one this of the... has been under discuss- discussion since before Honey Badger Radio. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And in fact... Allison was writing about this quite some time ago. I'm not even sure when she wrote the article, Manufacturing, or was it uh, Manufacturing Female Victimhood and Marginalizing Male Victims? And that got me started looking for more information specifically on the raw numbers from that CDC study. And I went through an entire drama with trying to get those numbers from the CDC with a Freedom of Information Act request. And the the CDC has actually violated the Freedom of Information Act, which I'm actually not sure how to um, how to uh, address that exactly. They've uh, they've used a system to get around sharing those numbers which means they're actively hiding those numbers one, which one of, it, they're controlling who can see those numbers well, um, yeah, and, and so, it's actually it's not just controlled you have to demonstrate that you are a researcher a genders issues researcher with a project they approve before you can get those numbers 
Well, this is also, you know, the same woman who changed the laws so that it is impossible for a woman to be charged with rape. Well, I, no, you know, specifically because no, of those numbers. No, rape well, is there's a there's a little history of this. You got to understand um, the survey itself. Well, the survey itself is based on a style of survey written by a feminist professor. I believe she was a professor when she first started named Mary Koss. And uh, she she pioneered this concept of um, tailoring questions to get the answers that you want in sexual violence research. And, and the way they did that was instead of asking people if they had been victimized, they asked more vague questions and instead of using terms like against your will, they asked when you didn't want to. Not when you said you didn't want to, when you said no, when you rejected, when you protested, anything that would actually impart action upon the person being asked, but just when you didn't want to. And so they got all these answers from you know when initially it was just women they got all these answers from from women that led them to the original one in four women number um yeah and 66 uh, percent of those women said that they that it wasn't they were crime. not raped right crime. and yeah and and christina hoff summers this was clear back in 93 christina hoff summers just ripped that apart and the toledo blade covered it um and they went through and they actually made a comparison uh, between casa's study and other studies and department of uh, justice numbers and so on and um that's all actually described in an article i wrote for gender addict called who defines rape uh, but also, um, they they found as they were going through and, and reusing this the same uh, the same methodology, yeah. As they continued to reuse this methodology, they began to discover that men were giving the same answers as women, and they were getting the same answers from men in similar numbers. And Koss uh, decided when she found that out that they would define being made to penetrate differently than they defined uh, being being penetrated forcibly. So if, say, coitus happened um, and it was forced on the woman, that was rape. But if it was forced on, on the man, that was just unwanted sex. And her her reason for that was she just decided it, it just wasn't bad as bad when it happened to a guy. It wasn't well, her, her that big of a reasoning, deal. Her reasoning was that Though she, though we acknowledge the legitimacy of men's perceptions that they have had unwanted sex with a female partner when they were ambivalent about their own sexual desires. In other yeah. words, yeah. he just didn't realize at the time that he actually wanted it. Right. right, right. That is that is really what it is. He actually wanted it. He just didn't know it. Right, which is so so, yeah. so in line with how we've traditionally felt about male sexuality and how they can't really say no and they can't help themselves and they're up for it all the time. And here's this feminist who's supposed to be breaking down these gender norms, right? Using it to intentionally to make sure that male victims and female perpetrators are not captured in the rape numbers. Yes, because they would not be able to exploit male victims for money and political power the way they could female victims. And they could not use that to break down due process rights the way they can if they have a set of female victims that society is just absolutely hysterical over. So as we get back to the CDC study, um, when we figured out as, as a group, and this all sort of happened through reddit uh allison and and karen and i and a bunch of other redditors ended up discussing this study after it came out we discussed it extensively and once it came out that uh made to penetrate and being forcibly penetrated were defined as different things 
and that the numbers for the 2010 or the percentages for the, the 2010 questions were the same. And we began to look into it further. And that's why I, uh, I came out with that Freedom of Information Act request. And when I realized that they were not going to share the, the full set of numbers, and they did send me a partial set. They just didn't send me a full set. And, okay. and the, the, the reason they, they sent the partial set instead of the full set, their claim was that the, the math could not be done on the full set, so they weren't giving me the numbers, okay. um, which basically meant that they were making the decision for me how I could evaluate those numbers, and they wouldn't even release them to me without a phone call with the um, – a conference call with the researchers themselves whose job it was to tell me why those numbers were completely useless. And uh, in the course of the phone calls, I realized what they were doing. I, I finally decided to confront them with the issue of, of their, their uh, defining rape as rape when it happens to women, but not when it happens to men and, and a woman is the perpetrator. So I asked them and they, they could not answer it. The uh, researcher that tried to reply to me stumbled and stuttered for several minutes uh, before she finally just faded off. She she could not give me a solid answer. And um, and see that one I think is called it's it's in a video that Allison put together. It's at the end of a video Allison put together, which really shows how stupid it is to define rape as not rape when it happens to men. Um, but at the end of it. It it plays the woman's voice. It plays the recording of that part of the call. And uh, oh, that video is called Men's Rights Versus Feminist Rape Culture Explained Using Puzzle Pieces. And it is on YouTube. It's it, a great what video. I, it was. It was a beautiful video. What I found really interesting about uh, about the CDC is uh, the numbers that they chose to highlight were the most horrifying numbers when it came to female victims and male perpetrators. And the least horrifying numbers uh, for the other way around. It was the one in five women and one in 71 men, right? Um, which those numbers, one in five women and one in 71 men will be victims of rape in their lifetimes, right? Right. They chose those numbers because they have the smallest amount of male victims, right? And zero female perpetrators, zero, zero to list. And the largest number of female victims, right? The scariest number for female victims, right? When, and one of the other things that I noticed about this, the NISVS, at least the 2010 one, was that they listed the number or the percentage, uh, you know, for made to penetrate, uh, 79.2% of men reported only female perpetrators um, over their lifetimes. Okay. But they did not, and I know they have this data, right? They did not present the, in the report, the number, uh, the percentage of female perpetrators of made to penetrate over the previous 12 months. Right. Um, and I, I will say the, that the data they did give me, there is a link to my blog in that. And I yeah. think that information might be in that data. Because, you know, honestly, when you look at how many, you know, when you look at it's, it's uh 1.1% per year, right. For women uh, versus one out of five, uh, over a lifetime, and then you look at 1.1% for men and 1 in 17 per lifetime for made to penetrate. It's a huge drop in the reporting over a lifetime, right? And honestly, I think that because most men are straight, and when you think about what's going to stick out in your head if you've been victimized, right? it's going to be more likely to stick out in your head as a straight guy if a, if another male took advantage of you, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's you know, all of those, we, we recontextualize, men especially, we, but we, we recontextualize our memories to conform to the cultural, the dominant cultural narrative. And the dominant cultural narrative is that men can't be victims 
of sexual assault by a woman, right? So I have no doubt in my mind that a lot of these men, and you can see report rates, uh, differences in reporting rates for men and women who have documented histories of child sexual abuse, right? And the huge difference, 16% of those men report, 64% of those women report on a survey designed to capture those victims, right? That's a huge disparity in the, the reporting for people who have a documented history of it, right? You look at the way we perceive women's violence, right? When we're asked to recall uh, a woman's violence 15 minutes later, we're going to say it's much more severe than we're going to say if we're asked to recall it after two or three weeks, right? We're going to translate it down. We're going to soften, the memory is going to soften her violence and make it seem less extreme in our memory. Human memory is extremely, this is why they include the previous year numbers. Those are the most reliable, right? And so the fact that they publicized the lifetime numbers for the specific crime that they did, right, which has the highest number of female victims and male perpetrators, the lowest number of male victims and no female perpetrators, that just looks a little weird to me. It just does. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, speaking about a sexual assault. <laughs> Especially yeah. what you would think if, as a researcher, right? As a researcher, you would think, wow, all of these men being sexually victimized by women. Nobody knows about this. We should be publicizing this because it's an unexpected yep. finding. Speaking of that, that actually ties in well into my next topic. Because we're going to tackle the stupid, guys. And oh. uh, But this is just, uh, this is government um, approved stupid. The It's On Us and He For She campaigns. Just when you thought that government approved anti-sexual assault c campaigns couldn't get any worse... Two more come along to show us just how ironic feminists can be. Because now we have celebrities like Emma Watson coming forward and saying how capable women are, women are in her speech to the UN, but then goes on to tell, how, tell men how it's their job to save them. Because that pretty much sums up the it's on us and he for she anti-sexual assault campaigns. While they make a small effort to seem like they're including men among the victims of sexual assault, they go on to push the common narrative that men are more likely to be aggressors than victims. You'd think that they'd learned by now that pushing chivalry not only doesn't work, but continues to be a waste of time and money. One has to wonder how long it will be before they take a more effective approach to the problem of sexual assault, and how many more people will be victimized before they realize their error. There we go. Discuss. Oh, oh, how oh, me, 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 me first, me first. I put my name, Chris, Nina. Okay, Crystal. Um, okay. <laughs> Crystal gets to go. She hasn't talked about so it. Yeah, this is a, a this is outrageous. I, I remember when I watched it. And um, I was pretty horrified. First of all, I don't know if anybody caught it, but there was music that played when she went up to the podium. Did anybody else catch that? Yes. There was like this twinkling yeah. of music. <laughs> I was like, what is this? I mean, how much more condescending a female can you get? Oh, twinkle, twinkle, as she goes all the way up to the podium. So anyway, whatever. Then she then she starts with her he for she, which is pure celebration of male being utility for female yet again. Hey, guys, you know what? You know what? We need you to do stuff. We need you to do stuff because of equality. That's what equality is, is you doing things. That's right. what men are supposed to do, things. And I said equality, so that means it means equality. Never mind the men in shackles behind me. Don't don't pay attention to the men in shackles behind me. Oh, Just yeah. equality, because I said it, and therefore it must be so. So anyway, this enraged me enough to the point where um, just create a petition to petition the UN uh, to create bureaus that support men's and boys' human rights um, and, uh, Jay Davis wrote this, uh, and she had support in writing it as well. Um, and I'm going to be sharing it everywhere on Twitter, Facebook, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So please sign the petition. So once we get a lot of signatures, I'm going to be in front of the UN with a blowhorn 
by the way, if anybody has a blowhorn in New York that you want to lend to me, awesome. Uh, it's because this, it's they just can't keep pushing this. It's all about feminism because that means equality. Well, you know what? If feminism is going to have representation in the UN, and I don't see that changing immediately, then it's a high time that the men's human rights movement also has representation in the UN. Men and boys cannot be silenced anymore. So, yes, that's what I got to say about that nonsense. And I totally and completely agree with you. And, oh, God, okay, where to start with this? Okay, um, first off, she's an actress, and so I firmly believe that somebody else is pulling her strings, especially with how much she was bringing up Hillary during her uh, um, speech there. Uh, second, okay, yes, she kept saying, you know, it's guys, you know, guys need to, you know, take care of the women, you know, put again, putting it all on the guys and taking no responsibility for herself. What really disgusted me was, you know, on top of that part, that part was num discussed number one, was she brings up how she goes to third world countries and she sees real women with real problems who are experiencing real, uh, you know, gender abuse and, um, God, I'm totally lost for words. I'm so upset by it. I, mean, you know, people who are having real problems with these things and she dares to lump herself into that category and say that it's first world men who need to be helping first world women like her because ah! third world women exist. It's like, oh. my fucking God. You know, really, oh. you, do, you have no freaking shame. You know, you know, you know what I thought was really shameless and you know like okay here's the first one i'm from britain and i think that it is right that uh i should be free to make choices about my own body okay oh, I, I think that's right too i think it's right that you should and you can because you're a woman in britain okay but a man in britain doesn't have a choice about whether he gets circumcised as an infant he doesn't have a choice about you know, in the United States about whether he has to sign a selective service card. He does not have a choice about whether he's going to be forced into parenthood based on the bad idea of having sex and trusting a woman at the same time, right? He doesn't <laughs> have any of those choices, right? And here's the thing that I think slipped past so many people. She said, uh, men don't enjoy the benefits of equality either, blah, 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 blah. Do it so that your daughters, mothers, wives, blah, blah, blah. And so that your sons have permission to be vulnerable and human too. I remember oh. that. And that was God. really okay. permission. Right. A man, oh. a man <laughs> is not ah. like a woman. A man who doesn't cry in public, a man who doesn't you know, make himself vulnerable like a woman. He is not a human being. He has to behave like a woman in order to become, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing, okay? Oh, you and he has to, to subjugate himself to women, too, where he's not a human that being. that wonderful, feel-good feminist slogan, right? Feminism mm -hmm. is the radical notion that women are human, okay? Now, think about that for a second and think about what that says about men. Feminism is the false and hateful notion that men have never considered women human. Okay, that's what that means. But still, it's a feel-good notion if you just apply it to women. And you, you take men right out of the picture, right? Women are human. Women are human. Therefore, they deserve liberation, right? What did Emma Watson say? What was her message? Men should be liberated so they can become human right? Men oh. should be liberated from gender norms so they can become Holy human. Gender yes. norms meaning that they should throw away everything that makes them male and they should, you know, join the bitching circle like we were discussing earlier and wear pants with no pockets. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. And throw away yeah, everything I, I, that I makes them independent. I actually wrote a letter to Emma Watson. I actually wrote, wrote uh, an open letter. Oh, that's amazing and it's, letter. Uh, yeah, it's on my, it's on my blog. 
at naughty naughty nerdist at tumblr dot com or it's also on the Facebook page. Yeah, it's, it's on the Facebook. There too. Yeah, a bunch of people started posting it around, and I'm like, okay, I just went a little bit. I got a little bit ranty, and then I'm like, I posted it. And I'm like, yeah, and then people started reading it. <laughs> but Did you like, make that but sound? yeah, um, a little bit. Well, it was sort of like, yeah, I hope you read it. <laughs> well, I mean, it was so it was so angering because like. I saw so much potential in there. Like she was going somewhere for a little bit and then it would just go into really crazy idol, uh, um, you know, uh, ideology. And, and she would just get, I'm like, Oh my gosh, what the fuck happened to you? You went to a university and then the academic feminist got to you. And it, it was so crazy because she, I remember there was a, a very specific part where she talked about growing up and how her friends suddenly didn't want to play soccer anymore because they didn't want to seem unattractive to men. And I'm like, that is oppression to you because some girls made some stupid ass decisions and it's a guy's fault because, you know, I, I just, it's a, it's a guy's fault because she, because, yeah, because men are responsible. Preferences. That's what it is. Yeah, men yeah. have preferences and therefore it's their fault. This is well, see, she, she was called bossy. She was called bossy. She, she said, said and that's, you have to understand it's hard for tiny. it's hard for a multi million dollar <laughs> actress who's only twenty two years old living in a freaking first world country. It's hard for her, but, you know? Yeah, you you have these problems no. like soccer is not going to make me attractive to men. I mean it's She well, actually it's said so I was called bossy and that's when I realized I needed feminism. Holy if she was, crap. Oh, well, then I will the call her right was. now. So you're not bossy. You're a fucking bitch. If she was anything, was if she was anything like Hermione in that movie, then everybody had every right to call her bossy because Hermione <laughs> is fucking obnoxious. Hermione, I, I have you guys all read the books? Did you guys read the books? You know, yeah, like, Hermione turns into this huge activist, but the thing is, is she doesn't actually listen to the people that she's being an activist for. Four. She just assumes oh, that she knows better, even though they all fucking hate her. It's like J.K. Rowling spent time with social justice warriors. Exactly. <laughs> right? Well, and it's just she uh pagan. Yeah. She probably did spend time with social justice warriors. <laughs> the you hear the part of the speech where she says, What's the this Harry Potter girl doing up here? I was like, bleh, bleh, bleh. Did, I couldn't believe that she shamelessly <laughs> did that so she could pull the little, oh, I see a little Harry Potter person on the podium. She must be so innocent. There's oh, nothing wrong that comes out of her mouth. Let's listen to her and eat her equality because it must be real. It made me want to punch myself just several times. I did not because I don't believe in violence. But it really was upsetting to listen to her pull the Harry Potter card. Okay, I'm very I glad I didn't hear wow, that. Wow, that is a low... Oh, yeah, I, I, I was really speech. shocked. I watched the whole speech in its, all of its painful glory. I <laughs> couldn't do it. She's young, okay? She's young. Uh -huh. She's beautiful, right? Yeah. She's yeah, got the yeah, perfect yeah. waist-to-hip ratio, but was modestly dressed, right? Her makeup yep, was yep. artfully applied to make her eyes look as huge as possible. <laughs> and her hair was styled in such a way that her forehead would seem as high as possible. Okay, just like all the little neotenous animals that we think are so cuddly and harmless have these <laughs> big round eyes and these high round foreheads and these very soft features, right? And and they, okay. you know, she, don't forget she, the slight quake to her voice, the slight oh, timid, oh. I'm kind of scared quake to her voice. Oh, yeah. like she's this weak little girl going up against all of these big bad politicians to oh, deliver yeah. this speech about equality. Could you could you not <laughs> applaud that and not have people giving you dirty looks? Like, I mean, I felt free at the Now conference in in 2012, right? during Eve Ensler's keynote address, where I think she said the word vagina 60, maybe 70 times, okay? <laughs> the very first time was in her opening sentence, are the vaginas in the house? 
And the second one was in the very second sentence, any vagina friendly men in the house, right? Okay, now that, I felt free to be sitting in a room of wildly applauding people, a feeling like I was on another planet, right? To not applaud, to just sit, sit and soak it in, soak in the insanity, right? But Eve Ensler's not cute. Eve, Ens Eve Ensler's not like a little fluffy bunny rabbit. Eve Ensler is not a delicate, frail, quavery flower, right? So, so timid, so fearful, so very humble in her appeal to all of these powerful people, right? That, that's not what that was, right? I don't think anybody could be in the office, in the audience at Emma Watson's speech and choose not to applaud and not get oh, dirty really? looks. And not get dirty looks. And, and that's the and thing. It feels so that... manipulative. It feels so manipulative. Com completely from beginning to end. I mean, how can you sit there? And, and, and that's the thing she said. I believe I should have the right to do uh, with what my body, with what I, uh, what I choose. And like nobody is arguing that. Who the hell has argued that in like the last, I, I just, I, I don't know. In the last, what, 50 well, years? Like... There's, I mean, there's, well, in the U.S., it's an open question. And the, the reason why it's an open question in the U.S. is because the entire basis of the right to abortion is based on an extremely poor decision by one court, right? That's all it is. It's not a law. It's not legislation. It's legal precedent, right? And it's based not on the right to bodily autonomy, but on a woman's right to privacy. So I could extrapolate, right, by that decision. That decision says... What a woman does in her doctor's office is between her and her doctor. She has the right to privacy over what she does with her body. That law does not legalize abortion. That law just says, if you want to commit a murder and you do it in your doctor's office, nobody has a right to know. Except you and your doctor. That's all that decision says, right? So basically, it doesn't say that abortion is not murder. It does not say that abortion is a crime or not a crime. It doesn't say any of that. It just says nobody has the right to know as long as it's performed by a medical doctor and it's covered by uh, doctor patient confidentiality. Nobody has a right to know she did it. That's, that's all that. So it's, it's, it's wow. the. Huge. There's a little bit of oversimplification there. The abortion issue in the United States is very polarized for a number of reasons that we probably shouldn't get into in tonight's show yeah. because we'll never get finished. Yeah, we will but never get there, finished there are there are a variety of uh, yeah. perspectives involved. Of course, and, and we'll just leave it at that. But there are lots of perspectives here in Canada. I'm sure that the, the ratio of pro-life to pro-choice in Canada is quite similar to the states, right? And it's a very close race, right? Yeah. But we have legislation. So if we want right. to overturn that legislation, it has to go through multiple levels of government, right? And it doesn't. it's not going to rely on one court decision that counters the only thing, the, the court decision that that ruled on the legality of, of abortion based on this weird version of right to privacy, right? Yes, but the thing is overturning that court decision isn't as simple as simply taking it to court either. Uh, so it's not, a, it's not exactly like that's something that, that, that it's hanging from a thread and can be taken away at any moment as yeah. pro-choice activists um, would like women to believe, or rather feminist activists, because most feminists that call themselves pro-choice aren't. They protest against informed choice and they protest against applying medical standards to abortion, uh, the, the same that you would any equivalent medical treatment. So, um, and, and they treat any attempt whatsoever to, uh, to insert some common sense into the debate as an attack on women's choices um, the same that the extreme right end of the uh, the anti-abortion crowd treats any discussion of abortion as an attack on religion. 
So yep. this is this is a very complicated issue, but we really yeah, should probably really move on because this is something that would just it'll take up the whole night. We'll never get to Gamergate. Yeah, they, they yeah we will never get to Gamergate if we if we don't talk Especially about it. Especially not if you get me started arguing it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there, there's a lot of ins and outs on this, and a lot of us have different views on it. Um, you know, I think we're at, at different places on the issue, but yeah. So we're gonna go to Gamergate. So let's go, Rory. Are you up? Are you awake? Up, up, up. I had to burn all my fabulous Emma Watson pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, speaking of Emma Watson, one of the things that recently came out, I think as an extension tangent of, of Gamergate, was that there was a hoax site that came up that was saying that it was going to release Emma Watson nude pictures, but it, but it turned out that... Uh, it wasn't real and it was actually a viral marketing campaign to try and get, uh, try to petition Obama to censor the internet. I shit you not to oh, censor no. the, to censor the internet <laughs> and, and to shut down 4chan because nobody is safe until they do that. <laughs> Why don't we all just pick up and move to China then while we're at it? You know, seriously. Well, 4chan is so scary. Yeah. I'm starting well, to feel, also, 4chan's yeah. dead. 4chan yeah. is dead. They all picked up and moved elsewhere. 4chan you know, is chill. Like, yeah. They came yeah. to it. They went to a wonderful new place um, where the, sta- the sky is over shining and the, and the pillow is also fluffy. Exactly. Oh, no, I don't know. The towel is also fluffy. You know, Albuquerque. I'm starting. I'm starting. Hey, um... <laughs> I, I am. I'm starting to. I'm literally starting to feel like Alex Jones. I am starting to fucking feel like Alex Jones. <laughs> okay. There's a hoax. Okay. That's been perpetrated to try to convince people on the internet to censor the internet by petitioning yeah. Obama. Like, yeah. like. <laughs> can't make this up. What? All you need are lizard things. Like Alex Jones on set. crack. <sighs> and, okay, and the crazier thing that where it gets uh, really weird is that the same place, it's a viral marketing um, company that may actually be a fake viral uh, marketing PR company that has, like, a ton, a shit ton of sock puppet accounts that all posted at the exact same time and, and everything. It's... Crazy. Okay, it, it, sock it's, puppets. Who's at the yes, now, a now ton of them. They're, they're, like, they're, uh, they're, bot, they're uh, Twitter bot accounts. I think they're probably... sound like Rebecca Watson. I know. It, no, but this is this is real, though. They've, it's they've Anita confirmed. Sarkeesian. It's totally Anita Sarkeesian. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we don't know who's doing this, but honestly, I've I got a feeling, and this is just my feeling, I, I don't have anything to confirm this, but we're seeing a different kind of feminist involved with the Gamergate situation because we've got feminists that are, uh, they don't really care about breaking the law or anything like that. And they don't, you know, chicken out of anything. They are totally willing to dox people, to DDoS people. They know how to find DDoS software. They know how to use DDoSing software. They, (laughs) they can, they have no problems hacking accounts or sending threatening emails to people, it's pretty fucked up. It's it's and these people are legit. These these are social justice folks. These people are on the anti gamer gate side. It's crazy, and it really feels like a campaign to some extent to smear 4chan and shut down 4chan because they happen to be there. It's really. It's I really weird. What I thought Moot was in bed with the uh, with Anita Sarkeesian. I, you know, <laughs> he's like on her side. He's been like censoring all the threads on 4chan that that talk about. Yeah, games. that's why it's so weird, right? Like, so why? I don't know. Maybe it's like even more meta than an Alex Jones even that. Maybe yeah, it's, it's a, even that doesn't it's make any like, sense because they're with um, Moot, Moot has direct connections to Gawker Media and BuzzFeed. And well, that these other, that. yeah, and these other companies, these people, um, they know Moot. You know, there's people in there, they're writers for, for Gawker and for BuzzFeed that both know Moot and his circle of friends. And that's what's going on. I mean, he's been directly 
funded by the same company that funded that recently gave I think BuzzFeed over a million dollars, and it was thinking, it's Anderson uh, Horowitz. But yeah, it's um, it's kind of yeah, it's really fucked up. I mean, I not everybody knows the ins and outs of that. Not even I do. But there's some shit there. There's definitely some shit going on. Well, what what if what if we look at that. shit and we find out it's it's some overzealous participant in Gamergate who's trying <laughs> to frame the SJWs by setting up something that looks like SJWs perpetrating a hoax. I mean, like, I feel like I need to go get some aluminum foil. <laughs> Like it's so it's crazy, like it's, you want, it you want to feel like it's just a dream, like it's like it's all fake. You really want to feel like this didn't happen, like these people aren't this certifiably crazy and going unchecked because they're in high positions of power, and that's what this whole thing is about. It's it's so crazy. Well, after, after Rory, talk reception. about your experience. <laughs> Rory, well, talk about your experience. Honestly, for the entire shutdown uh, 4chan thing, I just, I honestly believe it doesn't, I, it, okay, it's opportune that it happened, you know, while the entire Gamergate thing is going on, especially after a whole bunch of people left 4chan and went to 8chan. But what I actually think this is, is more a retaliation against what happened with the fappening when all the nude pictures of celebrities were released. Um, I personally believe it was in retaliation to that much more than it was uh, for the entire Gamergate stuff. But at the same point in time, it was opportune that everything happened uh, during all this, especially while 4chan was still being demonized for being the center of Gamergate, even after people have been banned and kicked off of it. So uh, that's just personally what I believe is going on uh, with all that. But as it comes down to, I mean, I visited 4chan not too long ago. The place, the place is dead. I I would expect Moot to be selling it off here in the next couple years. Honestly, I really yeah. do. Yeah, and that's another thing, though. He re- most of his both of his projects, Draw Quest, which was a game, which he probably got to know some game dev people in all that, and Canvas. They both tanked this year. They're both gone. They they lost funding. I I don't know why they were exactly shut down, but they. I guess whoever was funding them decided to shut the whole thing down. And the whole thing about the fappening is that it wasn't something orchestrated by 4chan. It was one person who just released them onto 4chan. And that's why there's so many shifty things going on here. Just because it was released on 4chan doesn't mean it was a group effort or something like that. It's just that that was the specific place that they decided... (laughs) To dump oh, the images. Where else are you? Where else are you gonna? Are you gonna dump nude photos of celebrities? I mean, honestly. <laughs> um, I mean, you're doing it for the faps, right? Yeah. And many faps were had, I'm sure. So, you know, I just. But at the same time, I don't. I don't feel a whole lot of sympathy for those women. I mean, why? Why would you take naked pictures of yourself that you don't want leaked and upload them into the cloud? Why? Why would you do that? Good question. I I, I honestly don't know. And yeah, there's very stupid. I honestly hope that the job. FBI is on on all this stuff, and they're sorting through it. But it, it honestly feels like it's probably just one big clusterfuck. I mean, we're not going to find out what was really going on about this. I don't know. Maybe never. But it would make interesting pictures. And yeah, but let's get to the stupid. Let's. <laughs> Get to some, at least to some of this stupid. And a lot of this you can find on a Tumblr. Uh, there's a Tumblr site called GamergateHarassment.tumblr.com. And usually there's a, I don't know, for some reason there's another one that's going by the exact same name that gives you to a weird, I don't know, a weird place. But anyway, GamergateHarassment.tumblr.com is, it's just a ton of, of basically the, the um, Gamergate side of things basically being abused by social justice warriors. So you can find some of that on, on, on that and of course the Gamergate tags. But I, I went around looking for some of this. Some of the stuff was posted in the messages and if you guys happen to have any more <laughs> please uh, drop it in the YouTube, on the YouTube page or the the blog page or 
read it wherever you found them. I, just <laughs> I have so. one too. Okay, but um, okay. There's some stuff with said by Rebecca Watson. It says, I said that that was the start of the hashtag. Obviously, plenty of women and minorities are stupid enough to join in. And basically, what she's saying is wow. that, yeah, wow. yes. She's saying, okay, wow. Summarized. What the yeah. fuck was that? <laughs> wow, discussion. she just hit a new low even for her. It says, uh, yeah. Holy uh, also, also, shit. Thanks to Gamergate, Twitter, Twitter, yeah, Twitter, uh, tweeters. I've learned that I don't think any of them are women or minorities. I and I am not a gamer. Ha. Huh. That was in uh, response to people calling her out for in her video Gamergate wow. and game journalism's ethics problem. She accused so now minorities everyone are posting stupid. under. Yeah, that's cute. She she accused everyone posting under the "Not Your Shield" hashtag of being sock puppets. And when she got flack for it, she said that. Yeah. It, wow. it's, it's, yeah, yeah. You can't question And then when she was confronted for saying that, that's when she called minorities and women stupid for joining in. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, dear Watson, for that astounding <laughs> vote of confidence. Good to know you think that. women and minorities are too stupid to make our own decisions. This what was a, a... This next one was said by Claudia Bolin. Uh, the patriarchy is horrible because it puts one gender above the other, and that isn't fair. And then later in her statement, yes, a matriarchy would be much better. Because <laughs> a matriarchy is, is, you know, doesn't put one gender above the other. It's completely equal. You know. uh, so uh, just because stuff. you're... Yeah, just because... Also, here's another one uh, from somebody else that didn't say... Uh, dear Gamergate, just because your movement involves women doesn't mean it isn't steeped in misogyny. And then it says a link was inserted here to the Wikipedia article on internalized misogyny. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Where to begin on that one? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> my mental image of internalized misogyny is a giant dildo. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I just there there's a ton of these. There's there's so many. It says, um it okay, this one it was from Lay Alexander. Lee Alexander. It's funny how dudes who are aspiring games journalists tweet bullshit at me as if I cannot instantly kill all their dreams. I yeah, hate her. she yeah. <laughs> she's um she's a bitch. Yeah. Oh. It's, I mean, wow, way to admit that you have a shit ton of, of power over their futures. That's, and that you won't go out of your way to destroy them. That's, um. Wow. Well, basically, I mean, uh, the that's the stupid is that she's w actually willing to go out of her way to say it, like to admit it. No, it's like, the fact that she she admits it and doesn't see the wrong in it, or oh god, again. Well, yeah. All these, all these, uh, especially when it comes down to journalists like her, it's that they've been held on this pedestal for so long that they could not do anything wrong, and now all of a sudden everything that gamers have found out, you know, over the last month or so is just uh it's finally blowing up in their face and of course they're going to retaliate like that but the problem is they're just so dumb i mean i don't know what else to say about it every single time i read a tweet from a journalist lately that attacks gamergate i just feel like i'm losing brain cells yeah this was a fun one this one is a little more threatening uh, to, it's a it appears to be i think of something on facebook over a phone it says Hey, I know where you live, and then it's scribbled out who the person is. I also have I also access to to private data on your Facebook and know where your family is. Stop posting about Gamergate. Have fun. And then the response was, "Oh, really? Then you might uh, learn that my cousin owns a law firm. Enjoy." Yeah. <laughs> uh, all that sounds familiar to me. <laughs> Just saying. It's it's amazing how uh, like I know two people from Reddit. Uh, one of them is uh, from uh, regular on men our men's rights. Mm -hmm. Got doxed, had to go deep, 
right? Received uh, an email uh, or a message rather uh, with lots and lots of his personal information in it, a threatening message. And, and another one who actually was a feminist, but was not feminist enough. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. dug up all of her info, including her parents' names and her brother's name and where they all lived and what she did for a living and where she worked and everything else and and uh, threatened her. And, you know, it's 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 a freaking scary, scary fucking thing. You know, like, frankly, I'm glad I'm out under my real name because I don't have to worry about that shit anymore, right? And I basically said the moment that I had any kind of problems that you can go ahead and phone my work and try and get me fired. Right. <laughs> and my boss is going to tell you, right. When you say you, are you aware that you have a misogynist rape apologist working for you? All she's going <laughs> to do is say, is say, yeah, we all knew Karen was a little weird, but at least she shows up. Never call here again. Right? <laughs> and just hang up. Right. That's what my boss is going to do because everybody at work knows what I do. Everybody in my life, including my dog, knows what I do, right? <laughs> I do this under my real name, up yours, right? And frankly, I, I wish, I wish everybody who was anti-feminist online, everybody who was men's rights online would just, maybe we could just have a one big coming out day because the moment <laughs> all come out, right, they lose the power to threaten us with that. Right. They do. Right. right? Then we're all accessible. Go ahead. Call my work. I don't fucking care. Right? But picking us off one at a time, right? And and kind of causing this, this atmosphere of terror. And it is terrorism. It's extortion. Right? Basically threatening to have you fired from your job. Have you denied tenure at your university? All of those things that people who have been researching this stuff people who've been researching domestic violence you know they received threats of blacklisting they had their grad students told you know taken aside and told you know if you work for him you're never going to find a job yeah and right? you know the guy, yeah. the guy from um not your shield hashtag because his workplace received like i think it was threatening emails or, or all this or whatever basically the social justice bitches decided they were going to call up his workplace or email them or whatever, and he got fired. Yeah. Wow. But you know yeah. what? That's repulsive. He's a black man. He got fired for yeah. this crap because these people wow. were so terrible, so vicious. You're disgusting. If, yeah. If they, they don't care. They don't care. They don't give a shit about black. Since, since I came they out. They don't give a shit about the black community. They only use that. They only use that to say, oh, oh, look what you're not doing, which is actually not true. So not your shield is absolutely a perfect freaking uh, example of you don't get to use black people as your way to make yourself feel better by pretending you give a crap when all you really do is think you're better than everybody else. So that doesn't really work. My dog, Nefanor, is very anti-feminist. Thank you very much. <laughs> I could not. My dog sees a feminist walking down the street in front of the house. She barks her head off. But there have been guys for the last three days ripping up the water main right next to my house. She just goes out there. She kind of watches them work, right? She just watches them, does her thing. No problem. The whole house is shaking from the jackhammering. Not a problem, right? Then she sees some feminist walking down the street. Bark, 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 bark. <laughs> That's a good dog because she can smell rotten pussy. Oh, she knows. <laughs> she knows. She, she doesn't want competition from any other bitches in the neighborhood. Oh, here's, another, here's another, so another lovely gem. Fuck you, self hating bitch. Gamergate is nothing but ugly virgin trash, male or female. You are all social rejects. Gamer ethics, ha well, hashtag gamer ethics. And, and you know what's funny about this? She's got like the female um, power symbol with the fist in it. Like, no, she's got a yeah, the female symbol with the fist in it. So you're like, could you be any more typical? Oh, okay, serious. <laughs> right. Does that symbol? I got, not I got look one like from the Twitter. Black, the black panther's fisting a vagina. Does it not? Look like <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. 
that and, is freaking and that, and that's, the, that's actually I, I got one for, that's I got one from Twitter from uh the Ralph retort this okay. was this was said by badass digest the writer was um his name is Devin Faraki and his quote yeah. is um his quote is here wait hold on here. It's, it's right here um these are the kinds of ineffectual men whose defense of masculinity comes across as almost ironic. Lots of fedoras, goatees, and anime fans, the kind of guys that manly men scoff at. The only reason most of these guys anime aren't fans? date rapists. Yeah, the only reason most of these guys aren't date rapists is because they can't get dates. So you can add badass digest to your list of Oh, you, you want to hear, you it was already hear there. a really good one? A really fucking funny one. Straight white dudes get really huffy about trivial shit because they've never had to develop the coping skills to live through life. This from oh, a feminist. My God. Wow. Oh, holy crap. A feminist judging anybody uh, or, uh, you know, about their coping skills. <laughs> okay. Wow. That, that, that's the definition of irony right there. <laughs> I, I feel irony. Somebody I, stop the world. I feel. Uh, oh, here, here's another one from Devin Faraci. Um, check out Rosar. He said he's going to beat up people in order to prove gamers aren't, aren't violent crazies. You're the one who has more respect for ISIS. You're calling me crazy? That's what, that's what Rogue said. Uh, Andrew Ross Atkinson. Um, ISIS is daily providing clean drinking water for thousands of Iraqis. They do more good for people than Gamergate. Yeah, what's a few oh. oh my <laughs> friends? <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of these people Gamergate. literally said that ISIS oh. is doing better things for people than Gamergate. And, and it's the whole sitting there saying, oh my god. I, you're, you're honestly wow. defending wow. ISIS? <laughs> really? What is it? The terrorists are basically <laughs> problems. This is the first. Oh, I can't. I can't. It is the I personification of Watership it, it Down. That yeah, that that shit. scene from Watership Down where the rabbits come across the community of rabbits living on a farm, and every so often the farmer traps one of them and kills them, but they stay there because it's you know they, they they've got some nice things, nice you know they're they, they're secure and they've got good food and everything, so it's okay if one of them gets you know caught in a trap and killed and eaten every so often. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll take uh, clean water from ISIS, even though. Other uh, groups could also provide clean water, and ISIS beheads people. But we've got clean water from ISIS, so we're going to say ISIS is doing good things for people because feminism is just not smart enough to do any better than that. Wow! Wow! wow. <laughs> I, I you know, and uh, and Hitler invented uh, social security. Are we now going to hold him up as this great and wonderful leader? <laughs> Oh yeah, he used universal health care actually. Like and he loved his dog. Are literally Hitler. Canadians are literally Hitler. You know, this this actually speaking of Hitler, this reminds me of the whole dictionary definition of feminism thing. You know, feminism is the movement for social, political, and economic equality for women. You know, if Hitler had won World War II, I'm pretty sure the definition of national socialism would have been a movement and a political party focused on a strong, independent, and united Germany. Oh shit. oh, shit. This is an interesting one here from uh, Martin Forster. I'm saying either or, and that while not all anime is misogynistic, the preponderance of misogynistic Gamergate types. Though, it says, uh, someone said in response, I'm gay and I support Gamergate. Are you saying I hate women? Then Martin says, those aren't mutually exclusive terms. And then it said, uh, then the respond the responder said, doesn't disregard the thousands of women that support Gamergate too. Response: You are either insincere, ill-informed, or very stupid. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Great lovely. comeback. Yeah, that's kind of their answer. Don't yeah. disagree with me because you're an idiot. Yeah, if basically. you disagree with me. Yeah, and they're trying to sit there and say, like, well, not all anime is misogynistic. The Gamergate types seem to like it, so... This just I... in. Gamers are dooty poo-poo heads. 
Anime is terrible because look at yeah. how they make attractive women. Yeah. It, it kills me <laughs> that, they, anime... that they love bringing up anime in that way. It's like, you know what? Anime is just a style of making films from Japan. If my anime ain't misogynistic, uh, I ain't watching it. You know, this is I, what I do. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's no more misogynistic than the, or, or uh, misanthropic, really, than the Hollywood scene or, you know, or movies from India or any other form of visual. And it just, oh, it just kills me when people think that anime is all misogynistic just because in the 90s, that's what they poured it over here because that's what was selling. I mean... That's it. It was just, yeah. they were bringing that that stuff over because that's what was selling. But now that we have the internet and we can see everything, we see that, wow, they do more than that. It's actually a viable way of expression, just like every other freaking form of art. And yeah. gaming is in there, too. Okay, yeah, I'll get off so my soapbox. <laughs> yeah, I watch so much anime. I can't even begin to tell you. I watch, I really watch, um, or I have in, in the past, I'm kind of a huge anime dork, and I'll drive people crazy if I really uh, my, talk. My and... daughter, too, whose name yeah. happens to also be Rachel, I think it's something to do with that. <laughs> I don't, um, well, it could be the name. Um, and... All right, here's a here's another one, unless you want to finish. I, I just want to say I'm so glad to see that, that the anti-Gamergate people are starting to use the hashtag kill all nerds. Oh my it's gosh, crazy. really? It's, no. It's right away down the, the page really? of hate harassment. Has it really are you kidding come me? to that? Not, Has it no. real, can you be any more transparent? No. And, really? And, <laughs> you know, all nerds. Nerd. What is <laughs> wrong with that? I, I'm, I'm going on this, I'm scrolling down and I'm kind of reading these things and so many of these SJWs are, are bragging really? about blocking people. Wow. Rory, what was it you were going to say? You said something. You oh, said something I don't like, so so I'm going to block you. There you go. There you go. Take that. Where is this, Karen? <laughs> it is, uh, oh, let me see if uh, I, can, I can link directly to it. Yeah, well, while oh, we're can. finding that, I'm going to sit it, there and it's say. It's quite far down. It's a Benjamin Hardy. I'm a nerd. Does this count as a death threat? And the reply is, I'm really pleased the only Gamergate stuff that's shown up in my feed is people making fun of gamers, hashtag kill all nerds. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Rory, what were you going to say? Well, I saw your name in the on the, uh, on the subject of kill all nerds, uh, I, realistically, what it boils down to with Gamergate is, as me being a big supporter, and I have, you know, a huge story to tell, but I'll save that for now. Um, Gamergate is not about the feminists or the social justice warriors are just throwing themselves in front of it. And I think it's slowly starting to become apparent to these people that it isn't. And that's why they're migrating to it. I've seen probably last night checking out my feed. Cause I, sometimes I follow some people who are against it and I have been noticing that the hashtag kill on nerds has been coming up more and more. And, uh, you know, I, I would, I, as much as I would say, you know, it's bad to see that, I do see it as kind of a victory that they're, that they're kind of acknowledging that it is not about feminists and social justice warriors, as much as they're trying to make it a part of that for their own personal political agenda bullshit. Well, what I found most interesting about the whole response from the, the gaming media in this was the uh, the the people that they serve, the demographic that they serve, wanted to know what was going on, wanted to know stuff, wanted it investigated, and what did the, their media tell them? There's no story here. We will tell you what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, but... How does that even work? And when, when the public said, yeah, no, we're actually interested in this, they were like, you're horrible people. Um Someone brought out recently, actually, uh, I was listening to some uh, live streams, and I believe it was King of Paul, who I'm absolutely loving his streams so far, is that uh, one person who was a journalist came out and said that if they didn't donate to Anita Sarkeesian's videos, they would be fired. So quite honestly, like I said, I just believe all the shit that's going on 
has nothing to do with the fact that they want to acknowledge that all Gamergate is asking for is literally for you to put down, take five minutes of your goddamn time out of the time you write an article just to say, I have a relationship with this person or I donated it to their Kickstarter. I think all that they're doing is this just trying to not only say, hey, we're, 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 you know, we're for the cultural right here. You know, you guys are just being sexist. Of course, they're not. And just trying to carry the shit out longer in hopes that the, the gamers collapse by this point. Because quite honestly, if you look at, let's say, The Escapist, when they release their policies, no one's talked shit about them in Gamergate. No one's pointed out at them. And they've actually released a, you know, a anti-Gamergate article. Uh, with disclosure that this is coming from female developers and how they feel. And no one cared. No one batted an eye. Everyone was like, oh, that's cool. But the moment you have Kutaku and Ben Kuchera start talking shit about your gamers on Twitter, you know, it's an entire different story because he's basically just belittling all of us that are a part of this. It's it's disgusting. So, yeah, I I, I just wanted to get that off my chest just because... All this is is fucking agenda by this point for them. That's all this is becoming to be. And all these fucking social justice warriors and feminists, all they're trying to do is trying to treat someone like shit for their own personal benefit. I even, I, I personally have had my entire fill of threats coming into my email recently. And I went off on a banter of just saying, um, uh, you know, I've been a gamer for this long. You know, I've been a gamer personally since I was five. Uh, fucking video games taught me how to read, and it, they were my babysitter from abusive parents. And lo and behold, one of the people when I was younger to, that I enjoyed playing games with was my fucking grandmother, who sat there and played Paperboy. And to this day, she has a working NES to play Paperboy. But lo and behold, I post a picture of my grandmother on Twitter and they said, oh, you should kill yourself for having your grandmother take a picture of playing video games. It's so fucking disgusting by this point, quite honestly. It's starting to piss me off more and more and every day. Yeah, it really it really is terrible. I mean, I, I, I do remember, didn't they send a syringe to somebody? Yeah, like an Milo unknown Yander syringe. Lopolis. Yeah, it's crazy shit. I mean, what the hell is even going on here? And the fact that mainstream media isn't covering this crap is insane. Because usually, you know, you have people sending people just random things like a like a, a syringe or something or death threats in mass. You cover that. But because of who these people might be who are doing this, they aren't talking about that. Ex- except maybe um, the really conservative people that give no fucks. And that's what it's really coming down to, is that it takes conservatives who at this point give no fucks and just care about getting a story, are the ones to take this up. Well, you also have to keep in mind that news is not objective anymore. I don't know of a single news source that doesn't have an agenda in what they report. And uh, quite frankly, gamers have always been an enemy. They've never understood us. They've never understood why we play. Um, A large majority of uh, boomers have this idea that anybody who um, is over the age of 25 and still playing video games obviously is living in their parents' basement is a loser and will never amount to anything in their lives, not understanding that those who game come in all shapes and sizes and are, you know, anywhere from making six figures to still in college. Um, So it does not fit their agenda to report what's going on because they just, they just plain don't like us, honestly. (laughs) Yeah, they, they really don't. And, and that's the thing though. They keep pushing the whole, agenda that gamers are evil that you know gamers are the type of the types of people who are going off and and killing folks and things like that and, and here's a here's another one i think this is i think this pretty much sums up some of this stuff every race color creed and orientation on earth 
is free to spout the same mindless drivel that straight white guys do. And th this is actually about four posts, that, all by the same guy. Here it is again, guys. It was wrong to call that lady a white guy because she expressed a terrible opinion. I'm very sorry. And then it says, man, being a racist is awesome. And then down below it says, wait, is everyone in Gaber Grape Bulgarian? That would explain a lot. Lousy, shiftless, good-for-nothing Bulgarians. Mm. <laughs> uh, like, what? Wow. Apparently the person uh, later apologized for all of it because people, like, found all the stuff and, yeah. Later they apologized, but it's it's crazy stuff. People oh, took offense right. and you he was shocked? If you horribly offensive and... and, and... You know, you apologize for it later. That just erases it as long as you're a social justice warrior. Oh, uh, well, there's tons of shit about Christina Hoff Summers as well. They're just oh, jeez. Yeah, they're just uh, really not too fond of her. Uh, apparently, well, for yeah. calling everyone out on this crap. That's just it. it. They'll they'll attack women. They'll attack minorities. They'll attack anybody that disagrees with them. Um, and 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 it is it is honestly it it's all about them. It has nothing to do with protecting anybody's rights or or fighting for anybody's rights. Because if it did, they would also protect people's right to disagree with them, and they don't do that. You know, you're 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 suddenly you're nothing if you disagree with them. Mm -hmm. And did you see? I don't know if any of you guys saw. But Feminist Frequency, uh, Anita Sarkeesian herself, posted a link to somebody that basically tried to riff on the Christina Hoff Summers video where she was basically talking about how the video game community was actually a lot more progressive and that people aren't becoming sexist based by playing video games. Yeah. And, yeah, so basically they put auto-tune to it and all that other... It was just ridiculous. It was what, and she she came out of hiding to post an um an MST video for Christina Hoff Summers. It was what? more like an auto tune the news kind of variety of of sort of thing. It wasn't auto tune the news by um just to let you guys know it was some other dude, social no, justice no, no, no. fuck. She helped make it. Oh, she did. Ah. She helped make it. She oh, loved the idea. She and while we're on the topic to of Anita, thing, that's really pathetic. Yeah, she also came out of the out of hiding to um, basically get Thunderfoot banned from Twitter. So. Yeah, that's not how, that yeah. is so freaking petty. It's not even funny. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It's like seriously, you're gonna stoop that low, that low. Well, this is this is what gets me about so many of these tweets on the GamerGate harassment page on the tumblr is that so many of them aren't they they aren't being abusive other than to basically uh the moment there's a disagreement oh yeah you're blocked right and this this is the exact same thing with anita is like because thunderfoot i mean he's been he's been brutal in his criticism as far as being blunt right mm -hmm. but he has not been misogynistic he has not been uh, attacking, uh, you know, her as a woman. She, he's been attacking her as what he considers to be a scam artist, right? And he attacks scam artists all the time. He did, did a whole series of videos on the solar frickin' roadways and how stupid and unworkable that whole idea is and how ridiculous it is that they've gotten millions of dollars of, of funding from their, their fund anything or Kickstarter. They got or whatever. government funding for that thing. My tax dollars went to that scam. I'm pissed about it. If there was, if there was anything uh, even remotely uh, substantial in their project, they would have gotten much more than one government grant for it. Um, having some experience with research and development and technology and the kind of money that gets thrown at stuff like that from governments, they would have gotten more than the one grant if there was anything there. But Sorry, of money and bannings. Uh, do any of you have, have any of you heard about the mighty number nine incident? 
No. Oh, hell yeah. Yes. Yeah, I heard, I heard okay. a bit about that. Actually, well, I brought I'll it go, up I'll on do a previous a, episode. I'll do it on a, a little bit of a backstory for people who don't know. Uh, Mighty Number no. 9 was a Kickstarter game that was a spiritual success, uh, successor to the Mega Man series. It's a series that I actually love to play for the most part because of the difficulty. And yes, I actually did donate to Mighty Number no. 9. I put in $300 towards it. Um, Are you asking for your money back? I already got my money back. That's, oh, not, good. that's not the deal. Basically, uh, uh, the community manager, her name's Dina, uh, went on a tirade on Twitter against other people. Lo and behold, one of the tweets actually says, baby pooped his diaper. Giga, giga, poo, poo. You said that your bullshit was exposed. Boo-hoo, wham, fuck you. This is the community manager for a game that people have been looking forward to, especially those people who got shit on by Capcom and now have the guy who helped create the series put a feminist community leader on his team who is now banning people who are supporters of Gamergate from the Twitter and making it so they can't get refunds on their game directly from them. Hmm. Didn't she also shit. want to change the gender of the uh, the main character? To a and... Yeah. Yeah. She, 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 oh, crazy. she She basically said that she only has ever blocked one person and asked everyone to come out with proof. And there was a flood of it. I was one of the people who was banned on it. Just calling it out. It wasn't just one person. I more was, like I a few hundred. I always find that hilarious because, you know, like, I... Here's the thing. I don't moderate my YouTube comments at all, right? Like every week or two or three, I go into my, you know, the all of the automatically spamified by YouTube messages and, and comments, and I go and I liberate all of them. I check the big check mark. I don't even read them. I just liberate them all, right? Because the moment that I start moderating comments, right, and blocking who's allowed to speak on my channel... That's the moment that I take responsibility for the things that are said on my channel. If all of the comments have to go through me before they appear in public, then I am vetting those comments before they are made public and I am taking responsibility for them, right? So I don't want to have all that work to do. I don't want to do that. So I just leave all of it wide open. And you know what? I don't read most of them. I don't look at them, right? It's, you know, I'll participate for the first few days after I upload a video, and then that's it. I don't do anything. I just, they just, they show up, and it's like they're off in, a, in some corner of my house where the dust bunnies collect, and I won't go and clean it for, you know, 10 years, and by then I won't even recognize what's there, right? That is how I look at the comments. If you do not, y you have the choice to not pay attention to shit, Right? I have lots of trolls. I have trolls that follow me around. I have trolls that comment on every one of my videos and then they follow me around everywhere else I comment because they're subscribed to all of my fucking feeds, right? And they go and they leave drive-by horrible ad hominem attacks there. Uh, Sail Polani's wonderful for doing that while deactivating her reply button. So she'll leave a nasty comment, a slanderous comment about me with no reply button on it. And, and off she goes. Take that, right? I don't care. I don't care. She, she, she made a 10 minute video once calling me a whore. I feel like I should have downloaded it because her channel's now gone, right? That channel that she posted it to is now gone, deleted for abusive content. And, and I just wish I could have saved it. You know, like, honestly, why do people care so much that people say nasty things? I can see why Gamergate people care. Right. And it's not because they I don't think it's because they feel abused. I think it's because they're showing the hypocrisy. You do it to show the hypocrisy. You don't do it because necessarily your feelings are all hurty. But she <laughs> throws it back inside of everyone's faces where you oh, leave everything, you know, unmoderated and to quote yeah. something she says. And this was pointed at the user Casual Bat. 
it's called having zero awareness of how small of the percentage of the market you are. That line right there just completely sums up what Gamergate has been dealing with. From start to finish, gamers asked for disclosure, acknowledgement, and this is what these people have been doing, and feminists and social justice warriors have been jumping all over it. But I think that that one line right there dead sets how these journalists and such feel about gamers. Oh yeah, no, I think I think it's a huge insult. And I think gamers have every right to be angry about the very, very, very public and very concerted attempts to basically demonize <coughs> their the people who who put the butter on their bread, right? That that's the really stupid thing. That's the self-destructive thing on the part of those journalists. Like who do they think is gonna read their fucking journals about games? You know, once well, all they, the gamers they, abandon, they take us for, for they take us uh, for granted. They think, well, where else are they gonna go? And it's like, um, the internet, duh. But they don't think that way. They think that they're the one stop, and that there's nowhere else to go, and that they can kick us and treat us like shit, and and manipulate us, and you know, however they want. And uh, I think this is, you know, a huge wake up call. As Rory said, they had no clue how small a fish they were in this pond. Well, I mean, that's like, a big reckoning that journalism in general is is due for. Um, and I, I say journalism as a profession, not not uh, journalism as a concept, because journalism as a concept is largely dead inside of journalism as a profession. But you know, these people that that are uh, you know attacking gamers and and opposing Gamergate have pretty well demonstrated that they think gamers are stupid. You know, going so far as to try to um, try to distract from the hashtag by creating other hashtags, sort of trying to derail the conversation. It's something that Nefinor pointed out in chat. He listed a couple of them. And I, I noticed that as well. A lot of them would hashtag to Gamergate, and then they'd have another hashtag that, that has Gamer in it and, and would be something entirely different, as if... You could just be distracted from from the uh, the circumstances that are being discussed and and the outrage over them by you know somebody putting up a new hashtag. Oh, we're popular. We'll 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 get you guys to change your minds. I just find it hilarious that like they like people are abandoning 4chan. Does Kotaku think that it's immune to that? And once all the actual gamers have left, what's going to be left for them to report on? Feminism, social justice warriorism. It's just going to become another Jezebel. Well, it's well, it's act be actually, while we were talking, this is cool. While we've been doing this show, EA came out and apologized and said how much they appreciate gamers and said that it's disgusting how the press has been treating gamers. They, the president of EA Games flat out said that the press has been treating gamers like police uh, treating protesters. And that's wow. while we've been doing this show. Wow. You know, I, I think that doesn't go far enough because after watching the Warren Farrell protest and how the police treated those protesters, they were pretty much way about a hundred billion times more respectful of those violent, hateful fucks than games journalists have been, you know, with the gamers. Yeah, and EA right now is also funding the It's On Us campaign, which we talked about earlier. Yeah, well, <laughs> they got to do something to salvage their credibility. I mean, that was a big mm -hmm. mistake. That was that was a big, bad PR move to do right in the middle of all of this, because there is yeah. just so much animosity that's been churned up by this between feminists, the feminist social justice warrior side, and their the people who butter their bread, right? And apparently they just think talking out of both sides of their faces will fix it. Because, again, they I think we're stupid. Think, I don't think that they, I don't think that they realized, like, because they're, they're working. They're working, they're making games, they're working on their games, they're taking advice from PR specialists and consultants, right? They're doing all of this, and somebody comes to them and says, oh, we, they, you know, they have this great plan to, you know, stop sexual assault. Like, let's, we should join in on that, right? 
And those people who are telling those, the, the, the people who are making the decisions are completely detached from what's going on. They don't know the depth of, like, the, the overall context of Gamergate is happening within an overall context of growing anti-feminism online, an increasing base of people who have fucking had enough, right, of it, you, you men need to help the women. Right. Otherwise, you're misogynists like everybody's starting to have enough of that bullshit. But all of these people who are making decisions in these companies that are probably working very long work days. Right. And are not really paying attention to this kind of stuff. Right. They're taking advice from consultants and stuff. And, and they're thinking, oh, that, that would be a great idea. And because, because who would disagree with with stopping sexual assault. They're not thinking about it. They, they haven't even considered any of this other context. Yeah. Right. So it could have just been just a, a naive PR decision, a naive decision. And then they start to get blowback from it that they didn't think was coming because they were completely unaware of all of this. I mean, like we've been existing in this movement for a long time, we know oh, what's going on, but not everybody does. We're out of time, everybody. <laughs> um, I guess we got to wrap things up. All right. I want to thank everybody who's been involved with the show today. Karen, everybody, <laughs> Hannah Wallen, <laughs> Crystal Garcia, uh, Kat Rocha, even the people in the back, um, everybody like Mike who helped out with the, the show notes and our producer, James. Yeah, and the All people right. that bothered listening to this and maybe some of the new listeners we got. Don't forget Rory. Yeah, and don't yeah, yeah and Ro- Rory our yes. butter man sir. Like uh, yeah. I live in a rusty bucket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks thanks for watching everybody. And uh you can catch us uh to well next week. It's same badger time, same badger channel. Good night. Torpedo to the jugular. This is Honey Badger Radio. Radio with bite.